God bless you, everybody. This is Elder David Bratton, and you are watching Passing on the Mantle with Pastor Undina. God bless you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of Passing on the Mantle with Pastor Undina, keeping the foundation and doctrines of the church. Right now, I'm about to introduce you to one. You know him from his songs, writings from Hezekiah Walker and, and David Bratton and David Gates, I believe you've written for, and everybody else across America. We are here with Elder David Bratton, and we're about to discuss a very, very important topic. The gift versus the anointing. Amen. Minstrels across America need to hear what you have to say about this. What they don't know is that you are an anointed musician, minstrel, worshiper, Amen. truly. I've known you forever from the Timothy Wright days, okay. you know, when you had your group, David Bratton, which I still have that first CD. Wow. Yes, I do. I and th yes, I'm going to tell it all because he's not new to this. Amen. You have worked yourself to where you are to be the voice in the music industry Amen. and to be the, 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 the teacher that you are and the Amen. clinician that you are to be able to teach some of these songwriters and these musicians what it is to be an anointed minstrel in the house. Amen. And it's not just about the gift. It's about the anointing as well. And Amen. I think that we interchange it, and I think that we look at, we can just get over on our gift and not have to be anointed. Amen. Then we go and we look to be hirelings more than servants in the house. Amen. So please, let's start talking and addressing the issue between the gift and the anointing. Amen. Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for having me. Listen, you know what? You uh, do. It's such an honor to be here. And uh, this conversation is extremely important. Um when I began in ministry. Uh, Under Bishop Wilbur Jones. Amen. <laughs> and, uh, and, and even before, before that, I was a kid, like three or four years old, and preachers were pouring into my life at that age. Mm. And even when I, at that age, I found myself being around preachers and leaders, and they always talked about your relationship with God. They talked about your reading the Word of God. Uh, they talked about your Christology, mm -hmm. you know, your relationship, understanding who Christ is and knowing all of those things. And the gift part was always last. Mm. It was never the primary. Okay. And so, and their point was, if you get this relationship with God to a point where it is the primary in your life, then all the other things that you involve yourself in, whether it be music or whatever it is, are subject to that primary. Okay. So, um, every, even when I went, I went to college, I went to South Carolina, and when I got there, I went to a church, that, and I really liked the church. And so I went there, and the pastor said, you know, it's an honor to have you here. You know, um, we want you to be part of the family, but you can't play here if you're not saved. Mm. All He's right. like, oh, you can't play here if you don't have the Holy Ghost. He's like, okay. it's not happening. So, but I appreciated that because all, many of the other pastors have said, we don't care how you live, just show up on Sunday. See? You know, and that told me that they didn't care about me as a person. Yes. You know, so when I found this church, it's like, oh, yeah, you're extremely talented. We heard about you, but you're not going to play here until you get the Holy Ghost. Wow. And so that spoke integrity to me. Yes. It spoke, and because I was looking for someone to help me grow. I was looking for a father figure, a family mm -hmm. that would see me as a person if I never played a note. Okay. You know, and so... Having, you know, coming up in that kind of atmosphere. And then when I met Elder Timothy Wright, I was in college. And I was playing for the local churches while I was in school. And he said to me, he said, if you ever come to New York, I said, call me. And when I got here, um, I began playing for Timothy Wright. As, I, never, I never talk about it that much, but when I first came, many of the musicians, because I was from out of town and I wasn't from their circle, yeah, yeah. they all quit. And I started playing for Timothy Wright. The whole band quit. Mm. And I had to find a drummer. I had to find a mm. bass player. And But I said, well, you know, at the end of the day, I trust God. Right. 
whether there's one musician or none, or if I have to sing in the choir, that's I still it. trust God. That's right. You know, and my, you have a family that sings anyway, so it's amen. like you didn't. Amen. You didn't it's like, don't get it twisted. <laughs> <laughs> I I'll be my like, own look, stuff. It's I okay. bring my own kids and <laughs> keep it moving. You know, but, you know, in all those things I've learned, you know, you got to trust God, you know, because you cannot have a gift with so much influence and you not be under a covering of influence that is going to guide you in the right direction. Right. You got to have a pastor. Yes. You got to have, uh, you got to have men of God who pour into your life. Sometimes what happens with musicians is we talk to each other over and over again. And when we're just talking to each other, the conversation is different. Right. The conversation is about the money. The conversation is about, well, do you think such such a thing is, should I be involved in this or should I do that or should I do this? If you start talking to pastors and people who are influential, or you start talking to leaders, or you start talking to business people, they're not talking about how much money they make on Sunday. They're talking about how to buy real estate. Right. They're right. talking about how to increase their education. Right. They're talking about things on a completely different, different level, level, which will change how you view what you do. You have to start thinking, okay, how can, like I'm in seminary right now at Virginia Union mm-hmm. University, um, and the first thing they said was, well, you've already established, you've already done this, had this great success. Why are you here in school? It's like, you don't need this. I said, well, yeah, I do. I'm in front of thousands of people, right. and I want to make sure whatever I'm saying is biblically sound, sound and that I'm not guessing off the top of my head that's right. and making up things, telling thousands of people something that's not even true, and those thousands of people go to their circle and repeat yes. something Absolutely. that's illiterate. That's right. I don't want to be that guy. You're right. You know, so, you know, to me, the Word of God is the most important thing. Really, You've got to have the Holy Ghost. Um I feel I, I've always said that your relationship with God is not complete unless you are open to have all the elements that God made available. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, my wife and I have a ministry called God's Blueprint for Life. And in that ministry, uh, we try to encourage people to get as much of God as they humanly possibly can without the meanness of holiness. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you know okay. holiness churches mm-hmm. we have a mm-hmm. you know have always been mean, <laughs> you know. Yes. You know, you're not saved. Well, right. I'm gonna kill you. Right. Yeah, <laughs> but, you're right. You know, you, you know, you don't love and and we would ask people, tell people to be saved, but we did it in such a mean way that people say, "Well, I don't need that part of it, right. so I'll skip the whole thing." Right. So what we started doing is just showing love. We have people from all kinds of backgrounds. Yeah, because you do travel internationally anyway, so I wouldn't absolutely. be surprised that you have that kind of following. Absolutely. You know, and even when we have our meetings, there are people on FaceTime from halfway across the world right. watching and asking, okay, but my my thing was I wanted to make sure that anybody can believe that they can get a hold of God and that whatever their past is is not going to hinder them from their right now yes. and not going to hinder them from what God is doing in the future. Right. So we have gotten people saved, sent them to other places across the country. Um, uh, even like you said, we traveled to Italy. We took a group of people, and people on the trip got filled with the Holy Ghost. Wow. You know, so it was a di- it's a different understanding. Uh, if you have a gift, you need everything from God that is possibly available to make sure you don't misuse the gift in such a way that it becomes a curse instead of a blessing. Mm. So how do you feel about, you know, Hiring musicians. Uh, so here's here, here's my <laughs> perspective. Um, in all my years of ministry, uh, I've worked for pastors 30-plus years. I've only negotiated with a pastor one time. Wow. I always said that if I walk in the door and give 100% of what God gave me, I'll never have to worry about what the money part is. Mm. And so when I walk in the door, I want God to be pleased with everything I'm doing. And I know if God is pl- the money part will take care of itself. Right. And I, what I found with pastors is when I would go into these meetings with pastors, they would want to talk about, well, how's your family? Or who are you? Mm-hmm. What kind of person are you? Mm-hmm. And usually the money part would maybe be 30 seconds. Okay. You know? But if I walk in the door and I say, well, you know I got to eat. You know, I'm immediately telling the pastor I'm ignorant. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling the pastor I don't respect you. Right. Because you know he understands that already. Right. Some do. Some do. You know, and sometimes my thing is if you have to make that statement, you're in the wrong room. 
Say it again, please. You know, you had you you should not be in a room where you don't feel like the level of respect is is at a point where you don't have to convince somebody to give you something. something. You know, um, when I first came to New York, the first church I played, well, I was at Beulah Church with uh, Bishop Wilbur Jones. I was there like over ten, almost fifteen years. And when I first came to Beulah, I sat in the back of the church for two months and just enjoyed the service. Mm. I sat, and I loved it. So two months in, uh, I walk up to join the church, and I tell him my name, and he says, are you that musician from South Carolina? Wow. And I said, yes, I am. He said, I've been asking for you for two months because somebody called me and told me you were here. Wow. But I would always leave before the announcement, so I never heard him make the request. Okay. So when I got to him, he said, well, how much do we have to pay you? He's like, you know, we've never had a musician on salary before. I said, don't worry about the money. I said, just let me come in and let me see what I can do, and whatever you give me is fine. Mm. And so I went, yeah. and I think I started it, I think I might have started it maybe $75, $100, $150, something like that. But... Every few months, he would come to me and say, we're not giving you enough. I would never have to go to him and say, you got to give me more. Right. Mm. Because I was giving everything that I had, and not just was I giving musically, but I was giving character as well. Yes, y y yes I you have know? to say that. So yes. he didn't have to worry about me sleeping with the people in the congregation. Wow. Right. So I did not have to, you know, convince him. He would say, you know, he would call me into the office from time to time and just say, hey, we know we need to do more for you. What can we do? And that's how you negotiate. You don't negotiate by asking for money. That's the dumbest thing you could ever do. Right. If, you, if your reputation is not strong enough mm -hmm. that people know when you walk in the door what you're going to bring, you did something wrong. Right, you right. Know? Just paint the picture. Every place you go, give 100%. Give everything you got. Word will get out, you know what, when he comes, he's going to be a servant, and he right. really loves ministry. And then they'll say, you know what, you got to take good care of him because he's a good guy. Right. As opposed to, well, why do we have to give him mixed Or watch him because this is right. what their behavior right. is. Right. Because we know right. that's happened, too. So the, the, the circle is small. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's extremely absolutely. small. Absolutely. So no matter what you do, it's going to be on absolutely. the network. Because the musician is the second most visible the person, person in, in the church, church after the pastor. Yes. Mm -hmm. He's the one who gets most FaceTime in front of the congregation yes. after the pastor to minister music. The pastor preaches for 45 minutes. The minister of music opens the church with 30 minutes of praise and worship. Then he does songs throughout the ministry, mm -hmm. and then he does the music all throughout. Mm -hmm. He's vi very visible. So the same responsibility that is required of the pastor, musicians need, need to see themselves in that light and say, well, hey, I'm going to have the same type of integrity and the same type of character. So how important is even um, the dynamics between the praise and worship leaders and the, 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 the music ministry at large, the musician especially, when they are ushering in worship, that knowing that this is warfare time. Mm -hmm. And I think now that we have gotten comfortable with singing other people's music right. and, you know, not, no disparity on, you know, break every chain. Right. Everybody's not breaking chains. Right. You know, right. everybody is not on fire for the Lord right. because now they're come so warded down you can't even usher the presence of the Lord in because you're tainted. Absolutely. And so now my question is between being tainted, how are you supposed to free the people? Absolutely. And then on those that possibly are free, how important it is that you sing the songs of the Lord in a fresh atmosphere to create an atmosphere of worship of songs that we haven't even seen that you know are directly coming from heaven. Absolutely. So, you know, that's one of the things that's very important to me. Um, I've often said that, uh, I ask, I, when I do workshops with musicians, I ask them, I said, well, if the pastor went on the internet and got his sermons and preached them every week off the internet, how would you feel? Mm -hmm. I said, well, he's not hearing from God. I said, well, what's the difference between him getting it off the internet and you getting all your songs off the internet? Right. Wow. Same thing. When God, it, you don't know the sound of a house until the music is developed in that house for that house. Mm -hmm. You know, different songs in different churches are great, but they were built for that atmosphere. Right. They are going to be a blessing to the kingdom, but not a blessing, at, but they shouldn't be used in such a way that you now feel like you have shortcuts. Yes. And yes. what happens is when you are hearing from God musically, you, you use your free time differently. Right. When you're trying to figure out how to write music and songs that are going to be a blessing to the kingdom, 
your idle time ain't idle. Yes. You know, because yes. now you're you're thinking of, okay, I heard these great songs, but I don't want to live on great songs. Yes. I want to write some things, or I want to hear from God. God, can you give me something? Right. God, can you give me a song? Um, even to, to this day, I love, I have a great relationship with many of the artists in gospel music, uh, but I don't listen to a lot yes. of them okay. uh, to a large degree. Yes. Because I don't want their style to, to infiltrate sound. what God is giving me. Right. Uh, I listen, and that's what preaching too. For I sure. don't watch a lot for sure. of Christian television. For sure. Because you know, people start. Well, who do you sound like? Yeah. Right. And I remember one day someone asking me what, well, and I said, "Oh, well, you know, yeah, I teach like George Meyer or whatever." And right. I, and then the Lord checked me. No. Right. You are you. Right. I gave you Absolutely. your own anointing, your right. own gift. Stop saying that you are like someone because you're not them. Right. And I had, so I just, I, I can't remember the last time I really like watched right. Christian television because I just, I just don't. I spend my time reading. I spend sure. my time studying. And, you know, I get a little ratchet TV on with the housewives. But outside right. of that, and right, right, network, right. <laughs> you know, food right. network, you know, food and, network uh, and HGTV. That's what I'm loving. Love it or listed. And, yeah, that's, yeah. that's, and that's exactly <laughs> what I watch in my downtime. Absolutely. Other than that, I am, I'm in the book. And it's okay to be influenced. You know, um, sometimes I'll see and I'll hear different people. And I like what they do, but I'm not going to dig so heavily into every single thing that they yes. do that I now become a copy. Right. Mm -hmm. um, they give you, uh, and I'll give you a good example. Growing up as a kid in my neighborhood down the block from me, rehearsing was Sly and Family Stone. Mm. And on the other side of the street was Confunction. And <laughs> okay. a little bit further away was Tower Power. A little bit further away was Larry Graham. And I hear all these, my block was filled with nothing but bands. Okay. Uh, and so I'm hearing all these bands, and I'm going to these garages, and I'm literally standing in the garages, uh, like Sly and the Family Stone used to rehearse, at a, there was a school for dropouts. Mm -hmm. And that's where they rehearsed, so, wow. and, which was down the block from my house. So I would go and hear them, um, but when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, God took all of those musical influences and recultivated it for his use. Yes. Um, I learned to play piano listening to Lionel Richie. Wow. You ever listen wow. to Lionel Richie? Most of his songs are in church keys. A flat, C sharp, mm -hmm. Sail On, all those songs, Jesus is okay. Love. They're all in church yeah, keys. Jesus, yeah. You know? And he's and his style of playing is it sounds like church. But Billy Preston was the epitome of it all. Absolutely. Now that now as an organist, and I had a chance to meet Billy Preston one time when I tell you. He was the most down. Matter of fact, he used to play. I'm at Zoe Ministries in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. He used to come to Zoe Ministries every third Sunday and play. Wow. wow. And he would just show up from wherever he, he was, was across the world. He would show up on third Sundays and play. You know, and he was the most down to earth. And he said, hey, man, I like how you play. You got a nice touch. Billy Preston says that to you. Right. You know. You know you got something. You, 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 you feel like mighty <laughs> life. You know. But right. he was, my thing was, he was such a down-to-earth person that it made me check myself and not feel like I should be wonderful. Wow. Mm. Because here are all these great people that I'm meeting, and every time I meet them, I had a chance to meet um, Sting. Mm -hmm. So I asked Sting, and my son was with me. So I asked him, I said, well, my son... Has a, has a record deal with a major company, what would you tell him, what advice would you give him in doing music? And Sting, Sting said, tell your son to find God. Wow. You know, and wow. he was like, after all the stuff that you do, if you don't find God, you're going to have a problem. Wow. He said, just find God. Everything else will work itself out. One more question. As a worship leader, now I'm going to tell you what my pet peeve is. Okay, gotcha. I'm going to tell you what my pet peeve is. Going into a church and, you know, the praise and worship leader is screaming in the mic. It's about, come on, everybody just worship. Come on, everybody just worship. I'm, I wrote this in my book, and it's, I'm on a twofold of this. Because, one, maybe I just got saved yesterday. Right. I don't know what it is to worship. Absolutely. I have not learned the skill of worship. Then, on the other hand, if you've got to do all of that, then you yeah. have you a problem. There you go. And you yourself have not been consecrated enough For sure. to be able to usher in the authentic presence of God. Please speak to the worship leaders and what is the dynamic, if you will, structure of actually effective worship. So I, 
I've always felt that you never have to ask anybody to do anything. And I always felt like it was not effective to ask people to do something that you're not doing. Mm -hmm. And so I would always say when you're leading worship, if you start off just <laughs> quoting the word of God, just start saying Bible. Start, if you stand up there and read scripture for five minutes and then start singing, I guarantee you everybody will be in worship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because there is, uh, the word of God destroys yokes. Yes. And you're trying to make people do something that you have to teach them to want to do instead. Yes. So if I'm making them do it, the relationship is not growing. Right. But if I show them how this is already a part of their lives, you start to, just telling people, hey, God's been good to me every single solitary day. I'm grateful. I lift my hands. I right. give him glory because he's blessed. If it wasn't for him, right. I'd be dead. Right. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be able to sing a note, play a note, nothing. Right. So I'm grateful to God. And then just start singing and ministering. But speak the word of God. Speak the Bible. Uh, another thing that's important to me is people have a tendency sometimes to feel like they can read the Bible silently. The Bible was never meant to be read in silence. <laughs> yes. It was meant to be read out loud wow. because it speaks into right. the atmosphere That's in every right. situation. You and should never read the Bible everything. to yourself. Right. Because it, the Bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue, not That's the right. thought. That's right. That's it right. has to be such that it comes out of your mouth. Yes. And you start speaking the word. And whenever you're leading worship, start with the Bible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Start with prayer. Start with the Bible. Trust me. Because there's enough prayers, there are enough worship Absolutely. scriptures throughout the scriptures that Absolutely. you will never be lost without having something to say. And it's more than just, you know, 120 25th Psalm, the 150th right. Psalm, you know, whatever. But, Elder Bray. Yes, ma'am. I love you. <laughs> Bless you. Woo! Bless you. And I thank you so much for coming and really, really, really rightly dividing the word of God on Absolutely. this issue. Definitely. Anytime. And you will definitely come back again it's because um, this worship experience, I really want to talk about, you know, your 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 instrument is your weapon. Amen. And, it, you know, well, how it good. breaks down. Let's say yeah. your, your instrument is right. your weapon, right. you know, and you you teach your hands to war. And, Amen. you know, we're going to cover all those facets because it's imperative. We're living in a time that we have warfare and we need to be more into our warfare, into our worship, because Amen. the enemy is is taking us down. That's true. That's and true. if we're not strategic and we're not prayed up and if we're not knowing what to do in the strat in, in as far as being strategic in warfare, then we don't know what we're doing. Amen. And we need to absolutely know how to ward off the things of the enemy. That's so I thank you for coming. I thank you for sharing that episode. Absolutely. So listen, stay tuned for more of Passing on the Mantle with Pastor Andina with founded, Keeping the Foundations and Doctrines of the Church. We will be right back. For more information, log on to PTMU1, that's PTMU1.com.